Have you ever been in the middle of an important video call or trying to stream your favorite show only to be left staring at a spinning wheel? Or worse, paying for high-speed internet that barely works outside urban areas? Now imagine this, a satellite-powered internet service promising lightning-fast speeds anywhere on Earth. No cables, no towers, just seamless connectivity from the Himalayas to the deserts of Rajasthan. But here's the million-dollar question. Will Starlink disrupt India's telecom giants like Geo and Airtel? And if it does, what happens next? What is Starlink and why should you care? To truly understand the potential impact of Starlink in India, we need to start with the basics. Starlink is a satellite-based internet service developed by SpaceX, Elon Musk's aerospace company. Unlike traditional ISPs that rely on fiber optic cables, cell towers, or DSL lines, Starlink uses thousands of low Earth orbit satellites to beam high-speed internet directly to users' homes, or even their phones, anywhere on the planet. Launched in 2019, Starlink has already achieved remarkable milestones. By early 2023, SpaceX had deployed over 4,000 satellites, forming one of the largest satellite constellations in history. The service is operational in more than 50 countries, including remote regions like Alaska, rural Canada, and parts of Africa where traditional ISPs have struggled to provide reliable connectivity. So how does it work? Starlink satellites orbit the Earth at an altitude of approximately 550 kilometers, far closer than traditional geostationary satellites, which orbit at around 36,000 kilometers. This proximity drastically reduces latency, the time it takes for data to travel between the user and the satellite. While geostationary satellites typically have latencies of 500 to 700 milliseconds, Starlink achieves latencies as low as 20 milliseconds, making it suitable for activities like online gaming, video conferencing, and streaming. In terms of speed, Starlink currently offers download speeds ranging from 50 Mbps to 200 Mbps, depending on location and network congestion. For context, TRIA defines broadband as any connection with speeds above 2 Mbps, meaning Starlink blows past the minimum threshold by a wide margin but why is Starlink so important for India? Here's the reality. India faces a significant digital divide. According to a 2022 report by the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, only about 37% of rural households have access to broadband internet, compared to 84% of urban households. Even in areas where internet is available, quality and reliability remain major issues. Starlink could address these challenges by providing universal coverage. Since it doesn't rely on physical infrastructure like cell towers or fiber optic cables, it can deliver high-speed internet to the most remote corners of the country, from the snow-capped peaks of the Himalayas to the arid deserts of R Rajasthan. Imagine students in rural areas accessing online learning platforms, bridging the gap in educational resources. Picture telemedicine services reaching underserved populations, enabling consultations with doctors located hundreds of kilometers away. Think of farmers using IoT devices and real-time weather data to optimize crop yields and reduce waste. And consider small businesses in Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities expanding their reach by tapping into online marketplaces. But while the promise of Starlink is tantalizing, its entry into India raises critical questions about competition, affordability, and regulation. To fully grasp the stakes, we need to examine the current telecom landscape in India and why Geo and Airtel dominate the market today. The battle begins. The current telecom landscape in India. Before we dive into how Starlink might disrupt the Indian telecom market, let's take a closer look at the players currently shaping it. Over the past decade, India's telecom industry has undergone a dramatic transformation, largely driven by two giants, Reliance Geo and Bharti Airtel. Together, they control over 70% of the mobile broadband market and have invested billions in building infrastructure and acquiring customers. Launched in 2016, Reliance Geo turned the Indian telecom industry upside down with its aggressive pricing strategy. Founder Mukesh Ambani introduced a revolutionary concept, free data. For six months, Geo offered unlimited 4G data and free voice calls to millions of Indians, effectively forcing competitors to lower their prices or risk losing market share. 
By the end of 2022, Geo had amassed over 420 million subscribers, becoming the largest mobile network operator in India. Its success can be attributed to several factors, affordability, innovation, and scale. Backed by Reliance Industries, one of India's largest conglomerates, Geo has the financial muscle to invest heavily in infrastructure and marketing. Unlike Geo, Bharti Airtel has been in the market since 1995, long before the advent of 4G. Despite facing intense competition from Geo, Airtel adapted by focusing on premium services and strategic partnerships. Today, Airtel boasts over 370 million subscribers, with a strong presence in both urban and semi-urban areas. Key highlights include extreme fiber, global partnerships with tech giants like Google and Meta, and resilience through cost-cutting measures and targeted investments. But here's the catch. While Geo and Airtel dominate the urban landscape, their reach in rural areas remains limited. Building and maintaining infrastructure in remote regions is expensive and logistically challenging. As a result, many rural users rely on slower, less reliable connections or no internet at all. This is where Starlink enters the picture. By bypassing the need for terrestrial infrastructure, Starlink could fill the gaps left by Geo and Airtel, bringing high-speed internet to areas that have historically been neglected. But will this technological leap translate into widespread adoption? And how will Geo and Airtel respond to the threat? Could this spell disaster for India's telecom duopoly? Let's dive deeper. How could Starlink impact Geo and Airtel? While Jio and Airtel are rolling out fiber optic networks across major cities, their reach remains limited in rural and underserved areas. According to a 2022 report by the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, only about 37% of rural households have access to broadband internet, compared to 84% of urban households. Enter Starlink. Unlike traditional ISPs, Starlink doesn't rely on physical infrastructure like cell towers or underground cables. Instead, it uses a constellation of low Earth orbit satellites to deliver high-speed internet anywhere on the planet. As of early 2023, SpaceX has launched over 4,000 Starlink satellites, and the service is already operational in more than 50 countries. In beta testing, Starlink has consistently delivered download speeds between 50 bps and 200 bps, with latency as low as 20 to 40 milliseconds, comparable to wired broadband connections. For context, Tri defines broadband as any connection with speeds above 2 mbps, while Geo and Airtel offer average speeds of around 10 to 15 dps in urban areas. Rural users often experience much slower speeds due to weaker infrastructure. Starlink's ability to bypass these limitations could be a game changer, especially in Tier 2 and Tier 3 cities where demand for reliable internet is skyrocketing. Moreover, during natural disasters like floods or cyclones, traditional networks often fail because of damaged towers or power outages. Starlink, however, operates independently of terrestrial infrastructure, making it a lifeline during emergencies. For instance, in Ukraine, Starlink provided critical connectivity to hospitals and government agencies during the ongoing conflict, a testament to its resilience. Now imagine the potential disruptions in India. With Starlink, businesses in rural areas could adopt e-commerce platforms, farmers could leverage IoT-based solutions for precision agriculture, and students could access online education without interruptions. These use cases align perfectly with India's push toward digital transformation under initiatives like Digital India and BharatNet. But Starlink's entry into the Indian market wouldn't just disrupt rural connectivity. It could also challenge Geo and Airtel's dominance in urban areas. Consider this. Geo Fiber and Airtel Xtreme Fiber currently offer home broadband plans starting at 500 rupees to 600 rupees per month. Starlink, while initially more expensive, offers significantly higher speeds and lower latency, potentially appealing to premium customers who value performance over cost. Moreover, Starlink's technology could force Geo and Airtel to rethink their strategies. For example, Reliance Industries recently announced plans to invest 75,000 rupees crore in building satellite-based internet services through its subsidiary Reliance Space Technology. Similarly, Barty Enterprises, a major shareholder in Airtel, is already an investor in OneWeb Core Satellite. 
a rival satellite internet provider backed by the UK government and SoftBank. In essence, Starlink's arrival could trigger a wave of innovation and investment in India's telecom sector, forcing incumbents to either adapt or risk losing market share. But will it succeed in such a price-sensitive market? Let's explore the challenges it faces next. Challenges ahead. Challenges facing Starlink in India. While Starlink's potential to disrupt the Indian telecom market is undeniable, its journey won't be without obstacles. Here are some of the key challenges that could slow or even derail its progress. First up, regulatory hurdles. India's regulatory environment for foreign tech companies is notoriously complex. The Department of Telecommunications has strict rules about spectrum allocation, licensing, and data sovereignty. For instance, in 2021, the Indian government initially rejected SpaceX's application to offer satellite internet services, citing concerns over security and compliance with local laws. Even though the government later softened its stance, regulatory hurdles remain a significant barrier. Starlink would need to comply with stringent norms, including mandatory data localization, storing user data within India, which could increase operational costs. Additionally, the Indian Space Research Organization tightly controls all space activities in the country, meaning Starlink would need approvals not just from telecom regulators, but also from ISRO. Next, let's talk about pricing. One of the biggest questions surrounding Starlink, can it compete on price in a highly cost-conscious market like India? Uh, currently, Starlink charges approximately $120, $150 per month globally, along with a one-time equipment fee of around $600 for its satellite dish and router. Compare this to GeoFiber and Airtel Xtreme Fiber, which offer entry-level home broadband plans starting at 500 rupees to 600 rupees, or $6 to $8 per month. And it becomes clear why affordability will be a major concern. Even if Starlink lowers its prices for the Indian market, it may still struggle to attract mass adoption among rural users who prioritize low-cost solutions. For many households, spending thousands of rupees up front for equipment alone might simply be out of reach. And then there's the issue of infrastructure costs. While Starlink eliminates the need for traditional infrastructure like cell towers and fiber cables, setting up its own ground stations and distribution networks in India will require substantial investment. Each user needs a satellite dish and Wi-Fi router, which, even if subsidized, could still be prohibitively expensive for many households. Furthermore, maintaining a vast network of LEO satellites isn't cheap. SpaceX spends billions annually to launch new satellites, replace aging ones, and expand coverage. Scaling these operations profitably in a densely populated yet economically diverse country like India will test Starlink's financial resilience. Let's not forget about competition from domestic players. Geo and Airtel aren't sitting idle while Starlink prepares to enter the market. Both companies have made strategic investments to future-proof their businesses against emerging threats. These domestic players also enjoy strong brand loyalty and extensive customer bases, making it harder for Starlink to gain traction quickly. Moreover, they understand the nuances of India's regulatory landscape and consumer behavior something Starlink will need time to learn. Another challenge comes from growing concerns about space debris caused by large satellite constellations. Critics argue that deploying thousands of satellites increases collision risks, potentially threatening other missions and contributing to environmental damage. While this issue might not directly affect consumers, it could lead to stricter regulations or public backlash, complicating Starlink's expansion efforts. Finally. There's the question of user adoption. Many rural Indians are unfamiliar with advanced technologies like satellite internet, convincing them to switch from affordable mobile data plans to a relatively expensive and unfamiliar service will require aggressive marketing and education campaigns. Additionally, technical issues such as signal interference during heavy rainfall, known as rain fade, could impact performance in India's tropical climate. So, can Starlink overcome these challenges? And what does this mean for India's telecom giants? Let's find out. War of the Titans. Who will win this battle? 
So who will emerge victorious in this epic showdown between Starlink, Geo, and Airtel? The answer lies somewhere between disruption and collaboration. On one hand, Starlink's cutting-edge technology and global ambitions make it a formidable contender, its ability to deliver high-speed internet anywhere without relying on terrestrial infrastructure gives it an edge in reaching underserved populations. If successful, Starlink could accelerate India's digital transformation, bridging the urban-rural divide and enabling millions to participate in the digital economy. Imagine students accessing world-class education, farmers leveraging real-time data, and small businesses going global, all without worrying about connectivity issues. On the other hand, Geo and Airtel have entrenched advantages, massive subscriber bases, established brands, and decades of experience navigating India's unique regulatory landscape. Their partnerships with domestic and international players like Reliance Space Technology and OneWeb further strengthen their position. The most likely outcome? A hybrid model where Starlink complements rather than competes with existing players. For example, Geo and Airtel could partner with Starlink to enhance their rural connectivity offerings using satellite internet as a fallback option in areas where building physical infrastructure is impractical. Such collaborations would allow all parties to capitalize on each other's strengths while minimizing risks. After all, increased competition drives innovation, lowers prices, and improves services across the board. Ultimately, the real winner will be the consumer. Whether through Starlink satellites, Geo's fiber optic networks, or Airtel's premium offerings, Indians stand to benefit from a more connected and inclusive digital future. Stay tuned. The digital revolution is just beginning. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more insights into the technologies shaping our world. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. And let us know in the comments, do you think Starlink will succeed in India? We'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay curious.